Well, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we do commit this day into your hands. We thank you that although we can't meet together in person, we can meet via this technology. We thank you for it, Lord, and we praise you that we have it. We do thank you for the beauty and the sunshine of the last week. We thank you for the beginning of spring. And it does seem strange having to keep apart from one another, but we do thank you, Lord, that there's no need for us to be apart from you. And uh, we're glad to be able to draw near as always. And as we do so, we come in an attitude of confession, remembering that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, scripture says, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we do pray that you will hear our confession, Lord, and we do say sorry for anything done or said or thought or left undone. And we thank you for the blessedness of sins forgiven and being in relationship with you. Dear Lord Jesus, we do thank you for your blood shed for us on the cross, for each of our sakes. And we thank you that all things work together for good to those that love you, even in this strange situation that the world finds itself in at this time. But we do thank you, Lord, for your own words. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So we ask that this morning you would speak to us through scripture, that you'd move among us by the Holy Spirit, and that you'd fill us with your love and joy and peace for your dear name's sake. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. And we'll just say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello everybody, it's Bruce here at home and uh, not allowed to go out and I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing the same isolation and it's a strange situation but God can make something good out of it and uh, this is a wonderful thing that whatever we go through uh, God can always bring something beautiful and something eternal anyway I'm going to do a little children's spot now and it's some an assembly I did years ago and I hope that not just the children, but the adults enjoy it as well. Hello. Right. Small things looking bigger. Now we're going to look at six small things and you've got to try and guess what the items are. At first they'll appear very, very small, well, expanded or distorted. And you've got to try and tell me anyway what you think they are. You'll see what I'm on about. First item is this. Now, can you tell me what that is? Have a think about it. I'll just change it a bit. Can you tell me what it is now? Ah, it's getting a bit clearer now. Yes, it's the button on the shirt. The next item. Now, I... I think lots of people will know what this is from the word go. 
Yes. It's, of course, a spider. Not a real one. It's a plastic one. But even so, it looks very frightening. The third item. Now, can you tell me what that is? Some people get this. Others find it difficult. But we will certainly get it when we get closer. And when I expand it like that, of course, it's a roll of sellotape. And the fourth item, well, some people think it looks like a sink or even some sort of toilet. But, uh, let's get a bit closer. How's about that? Mm, is it going convex or is it concave? Well, when you look a bit closer still, you begin to see what it is. Of course, it's a battery. The next item, yeah, it's a bit odd, isn't it? And when I take the distortion away, maybe you can get it. There we are. Yes, of course, it's a light switch. Let's have a look at the last one. Hmm, that's difficult. Looks a bit like bamboo or something, but actually when I take the distortion away, it gets a bit clearer. And then when we look closer, you see my wonderful DIY skills expanded. And there we are, of course, it's a hinge on a door. Well, we've had six items. The first item was a button. A button can hold a big shirt. A small spider can frighten a big person. And a small roll of sellotape. Small pieces of sellotape can hold a big parcel together, can't they? And a small battery can power a toy, a big toy maybe. And a small light switch can help light up a whole room. And people say, well, doors swing on small hinges. So these things have one thing in common. They're small, but they can have a big effect even though they're so small. Well, I'm going to tell you something about a little lady. And she was born you know, over a hundred years ago in a place called Albania. And if you look, I've put it on the map, that's Albania. When she was, um, I don't know, around about 18, very late teens, maybe early 20s, she moved over to Ireland and she studied there in a, a uh, a convent where there were nuns and it, so it was a religious place and she learnt about God and she learnt about love and she learnt about all the things that God might want us to do and when she was clear about her calling um, she sent her all the way over to India and now I don't know, do you know where India is on the map? Can you see it? Can you guess where it is? Well, let's move her over there there's where India is and the place where she was sent to was Calcutta to be a teacher amongst children. And as she was teaching the children, she would look out of the windows and see poor, starving people and their children, some of them sick, some of them even dying because they were so ill. And she thought, I really feel I want to go out and share God's love with these families, with these children and mothers and fathers and try and help. She went to the leaders of the school and she said, I love the children I'm teaching, but I really feel a burden to try and help these people out here who are on the streets with nothing, no money, no food. And they said to her, well, you go and do it, but we can't give you any money to support you. She may have thought, well, I better not go then, but she didn't. She went out and she went out onto the street and my guess is she might have felt so overwhelmed looking over and seeing thousands of starving, hungry, poor, sick people. And she might have thought, oh, well, it's easier to go back into the school, but she didn't. I think she probably picked one small child and showed it all the love she could give it. Anyway, there's a picture of her with the children and that one small thing that that little lady did. Eventually, people heard about what she was doing. And I'm not sure how many organisations were set up over the world because of what she did. There were many. And all over the world, because of this one little lady who made this one small step to help one poor child out of that 
through a wonderful thing all over the world of people following her example. And it just goes to show what small, ordinary little things we do can have such a big impact. She said something very famous. She said, we can do no great things, but only small things with great love. I wonder if you know who she is. I think most of you will. Maybe some of you don't. But her name was Mother Teresa. Interestingly, I remember when she died, she died at the same time as somebody very, very famous called Princess Diana. And the newspapers were filled with uh, reports of uh, the death of Diana. And yet there was a very small bit in the newspaper that mentioned the death of Mother Teresa. And it was, in a way, very disproportionate. But it really didn't matter because I know and everybody knew that Mother Teresa wasn't in it for the fame. It really didn't matter what people thought. What mattered most was what God thought and how much she served God by loving others and doing the small things with great love. So here's a few quotes of her. See if you can fill in the word. Be faithful in things because it is in them that your strength lies. I wonder what word you put there. Faithful in small things. So it's the little things we do that are so important in life and we're all stuck at home and we can get on top of one another but sometimes we can just do one little thing with great love in our hearts and it'll make us stronger and help our families be stronger too. Here's another thing he said. Well people said how can you just feed these hundreds of people? He said well basically if you can't feed a hundred people well, you can just feed and you guess what the, the word is there? One. Yes. And so we don't have to have lots of resources. Uh, with the resources we have, we can use them wisely in a small way, but it makes all the difference. And finally, people said to her, oh, what you're doing is like it's a drop in the ocean. It's not worth it at all. But she said, we ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean, but the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. So let's remember in the coming weeks that all the small things we do are very, very important. And what's most important, we do everything with love in our hearts, for those we're serving, and especially love in our hearts for God. And we'll be blessing wherever we go. So goodbye and have a good week. Hello everyone, David here with some brief thoughts on Psalm 137. Now there are two great motifs which frame and shape the Old Testament. The exodus from Egypt recalls the journey of release from slavery and oppression towards the land of promise, whereas the exile describes the shattering experience of being victims of global superpowers who conquer and dominate the land. Together, these two narratives express the tortuous story of God's people experiencing the most profound dislocation and disruption of life as they had known it, and then their collective journey towards a brighter future. These motifs speak powerfully into our contemporary experience of living in societies coping with the consequences of the COVID-19 global pandemic. Then as now, the feeling is of being caught up in a dystopian narrative where the familiar is being progressively rendered strange. Now, Psalm 137 is a lament written either during or shortly after the exile, over two and a half thousand years ago. It provides a vivid image of what life in exile must have felt like. So let's listen to it as though we're hearing it for the first time. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we thought of Zion, our home, so far away. 
on the branches of the willow trees, we hung our harps and hid our hearts from the enemy. And the men that surrounded us made demands that we clap our hands and sing. Songs of joy from days gone by, songs from Zion, our home, such cruel men taunted us, haunted our memories. How could we sing a song about the eternal in a land so foreign, while still tormented, broken-hearted and homesick? Please don't make us sing this song. O oh, Jerusalem, even still don't escape my memory. I treasure you and your songs, even as I hide my harp from the enemy. And if I can't remember, may I never sing a song again. May my hands never play well again. For what use would it be if I don't remember Jerusalem as my source of joy? So the psalm starts with a feeling that is universal. The crushing numbing, dead weight of loss. The psalmist conveys a sense of being numb and unable to function. It simply is not possible to imagine life on the other side of this awful calamity. And all over the world there are so many people now who are living with that bitter truth. And yet the society in which these displaced and disoriented exiles find themselves expects something else from these people of faith. Why aren't you lot singing? Come on, give us new songs. A new song? When even the old ones are out of mind and out of reach? This is sheer torment. And yet the psalmist is forced to realise that if they forget God and all that their faith meant, they'll be consumed and bereft, without hope. So now, in this moment of greatest peril and deepest challenge, now is the time to be mindful of the reality of God's presence and God's love. Now is the time to draw deep from the well of faith and fashion a new future. And now is the time for Christians to do just that, because that is precisely what Jesus did. If you think about it, he lived in a time of great peril, when all that was taken for granted hung by a thread in the dystopian nightmare of occupation by the brutal Roman Empire. His response was to concentrate on the essentials and do church in a radically different way. Indeed, he is wonderfully silent about so much churchy stuff that has until now preoccupied all of us. Instead, he lives and breathes and enables God's kingdom to be a tangible reality that transforms lives. This is all relational and radical, a quiet revolution under the noses of Rome. He abandons convention, throws the rule book out of the window and does what is needed to bring the gospel of God's love and grace alive in his own time. Now, that sounds like an agenda for us too, as together we rise to the challenge of singing new kingdom songs full of timeless meaning in a world eager for kindness, compassion and hope. God bless everyone. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the prayer part of today's service. Um, I've been asked to lead some prayers, and which I'm really thankful to do. I've spent a lot of time this last week with God because I've had more time than I normally would have, um, but also I've had more need as well. Um, and particularly last week and when everything was changing for me, I think we've all changed and had different circumstances in the last two weeks, um, and I was struggling, I, and I want to share this with you because maybe this may help some of you. I, the Lord was saying into me, it, it was the words that throw all your burdens, all your cares into my pool of grace and forgiveness, and sort of 
as that sort of developed over a few days and I was thinking, how do I do this? What do I do? How do I get out? How do I get all these things out of me? Well, it's that whole thing of, um, you know, getting with all the obstacles and, and the sin that entangles us so that we can run the race set before us. But God was saying to me, he was saying to me, pool of Siloam, pool of Siloam. And when I looked that up in the Bible, that's where the the man who was born well, he was blind, I don't know, don't know if he was born blind, but the man who was blind, Jesus put the mud on his eyes and he had to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And that pool was actually a place of ritual cleansing for the Jews when they went in the temple. So I think it's a wonderful picture of um, us being able to, whatever it is, whatever it is, when we take it and bring it before the Lord, throw it into this pool and we get grace and forgiveness, we get that closeness with the Lord, um, or I see things again, but it's it's cleansed thoroughly. It's cleansed, and that's what Jesus does. He cleanses, and heals, and redeems us, and lifts us up. And we can do that for ourselves in prayer, and we can do that for others. So as I pray, I'm going to pray probably into three areas, and as I pray into those three areas, I'll give time and pause, and you can bring your own concerns to the Lord in that time. And also, if with this being tech pre-recorded you can press the pause button if you want to and spend just a bit more time and then press play again and come back with us so i'll i'll pray for us i think it's important for us to pray for ourselves first to 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 get rid to cast our cares on him because he cares for us and pick up that yoke with jesus then we can pray for those people we may be very concerned about the people in the locality anything like that and then finally we can pray for the pray for the bigger picture of what the whole world's going through in all sorts of different ways. So I'll lift up the scripture that David's been preaching on, or at least part of it, um, as we start to pray and say, Lord, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? So let's pray. Father God, Thank you that we can call you Abba Father. Thank you that while we were still lost, you sent Jesus into the world to redeem and save us, to be our king, our priest, to be everything to us. And thank you, Jesus, for your death and resurrection. Thank you that through that, through, your, through that, we can receive the Holy Spirit and we can ask for wisdom, revelation, strength, comfort through the, through the Spirit of God. You know in these times that we are facing such diff changes, such challenges, everything around us is different and each one of us is now in a foreign land. It's so new to us, so different and each one Lord is different. Each place we're in is different, but you, Jesus, know that place. So come, Holy Spirit of God, come now into that place in our hearts. Lord, we just submit to you now all our burdens, all our cares. Whatever they are, Father, help us to throw them into your pool of grace and forgiveness. Holy Spirit, come and cleanse us afresh. Bring us your balm, your healing and your restoration. Thank you that as we receive your spirit afresh to restore our weary souls, to just strengthen our spirit within us, to rest our minds, to say to ourselves, be still and know that you are God. Be still and know that I am, the great I am, is God over our, all our circumstances. 
in Jesus we feel some of our burdens are not, not being for ourselves, but for many, the people we see around us. Their burdens for members of our family who may be caught in, in this situation. There may be burdens for people we know who are sick. There may be burdens for friends, people in our church, people out of our church, people we know in the NHS, key workers, all sorts of people, Lord. So in this time, we know that our prayers are mighty for bringing down strongholds, are mighty for delivering people, are mighty for strengthening and equipping people. So Lord, in this time, can we bring all those people who are on our hearts right now to you, to your throne of grace, to our high priest, and ask and seek and knock, Lord, for these people. Lord we give thank you, thanks we thank you that we have got these amazing health workers all the people who are part of the NHS we thank you for all the people who have been um, turning their industries and things around completely to, to, to uh, make ventilators and equipment and tests and all the things that are needed to fight this horrible virus so we give thanks for all of those people who've been working tirelessly. Thanks for all the key workers who are sacrificing themselves in their own ways, either from, away from family, um, putting themselves into positions where they may catch this disease without really wanting to. Just well, all of them, I, it's hard to put it into the right words, Lord, but you know them and we give thanks for them. And I just pray, it's like I just believe so strongly, Lord, that your mighty hand it's through our prayers, it's just pushing back the, 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 the illness, the disease that's, that's um, trying to bring, it's trying to destroy what is good in this world. Lord, it is not of you. And so we stand against it in prayer. And Lord, we lift up our nation, we lift up the world to you, we pray for all the world leaders. We pray for all these important decisions that have been made uh, that will make the difference. We just thank you that um, we've got strong leaders who can, um, around the world who are making, the, who are stepping in and, and making the right decisions. And we pray for wisdom for them, massive, massive wisdom. And it reminds us in, that Timothy says to pray for everyone and pray for our kings and leaders so that we may have peace in where we live. So we do pray for that. I pray your shalom over our nation, over our world. Lord, may all the things that are happening change us and just improve whatever the situation is now. Improve it, Lord. Make it better. Make it godly. So, yeah, we bring all our concerns to you, the, the bigger picture of the world, right now. I want to conclude, Jesus, it reminds me to say now that you are the healer, and by your stripes we are healed. So can we pray for all the people who are suffering right now to give for you to be by their bedsides where they are, healing them, restoring them, bringing your mercy and grace. And I do feel the Lord wants us to say the Lord's Prayer. It may have already been said, I don't know. And if it hasn't, let's say it together. If it has, let's say it again, believing it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
and give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we just, as we finish, let's just bless each other. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his grace and favour. And may the Lord lift his countenance to you and give you his peace. God bless. Amen.